this is Angelica and thanks for clicking on my first video. I am here today to talk about something that I really, really like and that is bikes. So the first thing I'll be talking about is a little bit of the Colombian cycling culture. And then I would like to let you know about why is it that Bogota is known as the South American cycling capital. So to begin this story, let's go back to the 1940s. Back in the late 1940s, Colombians were riding a wave of enthusiasm after winning a couple of gold medals in the Pan American and the Central American Games. So in 1951, there was this guy called Donald Ruskin, an Englishman living in Colombia, and he decided to take this enthusiasm for bikes and turn it into what would become the Colombian Tour de France, La Vuelta a Colombia. So this first Vuelta a Colombia was a 1,254 kilometers tour that crossed over unpaved roads and broken places. And it was actually so bad, the quality of these roads, that riders had to get off their bikes, carry their bikes with them over washouts, creeks, and other obstacles. Actually, what made this tour so amazing is that the riders overcoming all of these obstacles were not trained sportsmen, but just regular guys from everywhere in Colombia. You had the gardener from one place, the tailor man from the other, and these broken roads is what turned these guys into the heroes we still love today. So unfortunately, the unpaved roads were not the only thing that was going wrong in Colombia around those years, as the first editions of La Vuelta took place in a time known as La Violencia. These were crazy times. The political divisions were causing bloodshed all over the country, but mainly in the countryside. So the fact that this was a free public event happening on the roads of Colombia meant that people could welcome tour the sportsmen and the journalists into their hometowns as a sign of hope and temporary peace. Colombians, who were not lucky enough to have the race coming close to their houses, had to follow the Vuelta on the radio. Now, these events were not televised until the 1980s, so for almost 30 years, people had to rely on the radio commentators to keep a track on this race. Some of you might have guessed the issue here. If the roads were so bad that cyclists had to carry their bikes on their backs, how did the radio bands keep up? Well, the answer is as Colombian as bike racing. They told stories. These commentators came up with interesting narrations to keep their audiences glued to their radios. They imagined the muddy, technical climbs, pounding sun, and the rainstorms. Their stories about faraway places, heroic comebacks, and adventure made them into heroes almost as admired as the athletes themselves. In the end, La Vuelta a Colombia became a symbol of Colombia's passion and pride for cycling. It also became a school where many of the most famous Colombian cyclists would upgrade their skills before taking over the international scene. But if La Vuelta a Colombia turned cycling into a national passion, then how did Bogota become the South American capital for cyclists? Well, let me tell you what I think are the three main reasons why. Reason number one is altitude. At 2,600 meters, Bogotá's air is thin enough to make it a sought-after destination for cyclists looking to train in a low oxygen environment. Pros and amateurs can easily fly to the fourth highest capital city of the world, jump into their bikes and enjoy the great weather, the beautiful mountains and take a VO2 advantage over the competition. So reason number two is Bogotá's friendliness to beginners. If you're not into hard bursting climbs, then you will love the Ciclovia. The Ciclovia was a program initially intended to reduce the city's pollution and traffic, but it was so successful that it has become one of the most beloved Bogotano traditions. The city hall closes more than 120 kilometers for cars, and these streets and avenues are left open so people can enjoy on their bikes with their families around the city. This program has been so successful that other cities like Lima, Quito, Buenos Aires and Mexico City have created similar programs on their own. And last but not least, we have reason number three. Bogotá is a city full of bike commuters. Although we are a city of about 8 million people, we still somehow don't have a metro system, traffic is terrible and the bus system is confusing, congested and antiquated. That's part of the reason why here, many, many people get around on bikes. Sometimes it seems like the only reasonable way to move around. 
And one thing that Bogota can boast about is its 540 kilometers of bike lanes, the most among any South American city. So tell me, when you visited Bogota, did you ride a bike? If you didn't, I hope you can do it the next time you come to visit us. Now that you understand Colombian's passions for bikes. I hope you've enjoyed this video and please visit our website to find more videos made by me and my friends. I want to thank Tempo Cycling for collaborating with us today and please don't forget to subscribe and donate. Remember that your donation will be supporting us and our recycling community here in Bogota. Bye!